morning, church. How are you guys doing? Happy Charter Sunday. Nine years ago today, we chartered as an official church. And if I'm not mistaken, it was actually on the 12th, but I have to check my Facebook, but which I don't have time to do right now, but uh, yeah. So we're so thankful that you're here to celebrate uh, not just Charter Sunday, but our relaunch. You guys excited? Come on, let's stand and uh, sing and worship God. We thank him for all the gifts he's given us for the last 10 or so years. I'm looking forward to what God is going to do through Edgewater. Amen? All right. He takes our breath away. Amen? I invite you guys to stand with us. Unless you feel like sitting, you can. You won't offend me. Your grace is an ocean. Your grace is an ocean with no end inside. Your love is a fountain. Your love is a fountain that never runs dry. Every morning, your mercies. Every morning, your mercy is new. You call me closer. You're calling me closer. I'll fall into you. You have all my attention, and I give you all my affection. What can I say? You're taking my breath away. Your glory is shining. Your glory is shining like stars in the night. I'm breathing your presence with arms open wide. Lost in you. Lost in you. I'm finally found. Never been so free when you surround, when you surround, no, oh, you have all my attention and I give you all my affection. What can I say? You've taken my breath away. So I'm overcome, alive in your presence. What can I say? You're taking my breath away. Every time that my heart beats, and every time that my heart beats, let it beat for you. And every time my soul sings, and every time my soul sings, let it sing for you. A little bit louder now. And every time that my heart beats, let it beat for you. And every time my soul sings, let it sing for you, for you, for you. You have all my attention and I give you all my affection. What can I say? You've taken my breath away. So of all of your goodness, I'm overcome, alive in your presence. What can I say? You've taken my breath away. What can I say? You've taken my breath away. 
What can I say? You've taken my breath away. And every time that my heart beats, let it beat for you. Sing that with me. And every time that my heart beats, let it beat for you. And every time my soul sings, and every time my soul sings, let it sing for you. All right, this is the loud part, okay? I sing it loud, and every time. And every time that my heart beats, let it beat for you. Come on, church, a little louder. And every time my soul, and every time my soul sings, let it sing for you. So in awe of all of your goodness, I'm overcome, alive in your presence. What can I say? You've taken my breath away. What can I say? You've taken my breath away. What can Let's give the Lord a hand. He has taken our breath away. Amen. Amen. He has. We serve such an amazing God. To still be here after all these years, it's a blessing that we still get to serve God's people in Eastvale. 12 years later is a blessing. To be able to relaunch today, that is a blessing. God is not done with us yet. Amen. There is a light, there is a light that burns in the darkness. There is a hope that washes the fear away. There is a peace that settles around us. It is your love that sets our heart ablaze. See that one more time. There is a light. There is a light that burns in the darkness. Come on, church. There is a hope that washes the fear away. There is a peace. There is a peace that settles around us. It is your love. It is your love that sets our heart ablaze. Father, we're on our knees. Father, we're on our knees. With every heart beating, bring you this offering. Lord, come and fill this place. Father, we're crying out. Spirit, we need you now. Glorious love surround us. Lord, come and fill this place. There is a king. There is a king who reigns in victory. There is a mercy strong enough to save. There is a mercy strong enough to save. We feel it rising. We feel it rising up from the ashes. There is a love, there is a love that overcame the grave. There is a love, there is a love that overcame the grave. Father, we're on our knees with every heartbeat we bring you this. Lord, come and fill this place. Father, we're crying out. Spirit, we need you now. Glorious love surrounds us. 
Lord, come and fill this place. Lord, come and fill this place. And I will worship you. Sing with us. And I will worship you. I'll worship you. I'll worship you. this place I love the metaphor in this song it says a reckless love but we know God is not reckless amen but to the human mind the human heart it doesn't make much sense to love sinners like us Jesus died for those who he knew that would receive his, his amazing gift and those he knew that wouldn't we serve an amazing God, church. Sing this with us. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You've been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath. Before I took a breath. You breathe your life in me. You've been so, so kind to me. When I 
would you throw? Still your love for me. You've been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You've been so, so kind to me. Shadow, sing that. There's no wall. Come on, church. Believe what you're singing. Sing it. Sing it again. Sing it out, church. shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. Oh, I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give. 
morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. And now you're awake. It is my joy to worship with you this morning. And a joy that we have this morning, but we also have every day, is that we get to come before our Lord in prayer. We're going to start our service today with that, so I would ask that you please pray with me. Loving Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for every person who is here this morning, for this incredible chance for us to come together as a community, for this chance to worship you for everything you've done, for this chance to grow closer to you. Bless our time together that you would be glorified, that we would be blessed by you, and that your Holy Spirit would be with us. Father, keep each person here close to you, no matter what battles they are fighting right now. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. And we, we pray about this because we do all fight battles every day. And some of those are, are with the stressors, with the anxieties in our life, but some of those are with ourselves, with the sins and the, and the bad habits and the things that we struggle with. And we have this, this opportunity now to come together and confess those before our, our Father who promises to forgive us. So I would ask that we speak together the confession on the screen. Almighty God, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and shortcomings that have ever offended you and justly deserve your punishment now and forever. I am sincerely sorry for them and genuinely want to do better. I pray for it in your boundless mercy and for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Having heard that confession and having felt the same guilt that weighs on our hearts from that, It is my joy, it is my pleasure as a called and ordained servant of Christ by his authority and by his command to forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The adults in the congregation may be seated and the kids in the front row may be seated. Everybody else come on forward for the children. All the other kids can come forward for a children's message. I know you're really tempted to come up, John, but you're a little... A little over the age limit. You guys can go ahead and sit in some of these chairs. Since the adults are scared to sit in the front row, you can sit in the front rows right here. Okay? Right there. You guys can sit in the chairs. You don't have to sit on the floor today. Yeah. I promise they're not, like, triggered to to get you or anything. Because I'm going to stand right here. I'm not sitting down. Yeah? What do you guys do to your chairs at home that they're scared of chairs? <laughs> Perfect. Okay, guys. So I have, I have three questions for you this morning. And that's it, okay? And I think they're three easy questions, but we'll see. So my first question for you is, what do trees need to grow? Yeah, one thing. Water, they need water. What else do they need? They need to be planted in the ground. They need carbon dioxide. That's like oxygen for them. That's a smart answer. Yep, they need dirt. Sunshine. You got anything else? We're, we're running out of things they actually need. They, well, they come from seeds. Okay, so we got what trees need. Now here's another, here's another one. What do you need to grow your brain? So trees need water, they need sun, they need nutrients. What do you need for your brain? Food, you need food to keep you alive? Knowledge? Water? You need to learn? So train it, you need to practice it? Not hurting yourself. Avoid concussions, kids. (laughs) They're they're not good for you. (laughs) Yes, I should. Okay, so we got our brain. Now, here's, here's my tough one. Here's the pastor question. Now, what do you need to grow your faith? Oh, yeah, that's a tough one. Jason? Hey, two of them were easy. That's rounding up to three. 
You need God. That's a big one. Faith. Faith grows faith. And that's a hard thing to understand, but you're right. Yes. So we have these things. What, I, I don't, what, else, what else could maybe help us grow our faith? The Bible, that's a good one. And this is something, I, you can put your hand down. This is something I'm about to talk to your parents about. And like I told you last week, I'm a lot meaner to your parents than I am to you guys. Because you, you guys know what's going on. But we have these things that our faith needs to grow. We need to be learning, just like with our brains. We need to feed it, just like with our bodies. And if we for, what happens when you forget to feed a tree, when you forget to water it? It dies. What happens when you forget to feed your brain? It dies. So what do you think happens when you forget to feed your faith? It dies. So this is something that we need to do because our faith is what connects us to Jesus. And Jesus promises that as long as we're connected to him, we have eternal life. So that's the lesson I have for you guys this morning. Let's pray together about that. Dear God, Thank you for faith. Help us to grow in your name. Amen. All right, you guys can go back to Sunday school now. sheep and one of them has gone astray does he not leave the 99 on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray and if he finds it truly I say to you he rejoices over it more than over the 99 that never went astray so it is not the will of my father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish this is the word of the Lord For those of you who have been here every Sunday for like the past bunch of Sundays, I'm sorry, but you get to hear this little shtick again. Um, for those of you who you haven't been in a, here in a while or you, you haven't seen kind of how I do things, um, we're going to speak this Apostles' Creed together, and I, I always try to share the reason for it, because otherwise it just seems like, oh, this is just something we say in church. But there's a reason we say this in church, and it's because I'm about to stand up front here and speak God's word to you. And I'm going to do my best to connect you with God, to build your relationship with God. But the reality is, I am flawed. My words can stumble. I can, my preparation can be off. And that can be a disconnect. And I can say something that I don't mean to say. I can say something that you hear not the way I intended it. So we say this creed beforehand because this grounds us in something that Christians have been saying for thousands of years. It says no matter, no matter what else happens, this is the core of what we believe. So I'm going to ask you to speak this together with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, was suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Having grounded ourselves in that confession, we're going to dive into the, the message text for today, and it comes from Deuteronomy 30. God says, And when all these things come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I have set before you, and you call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord your God has driven you, 
and return to the Lord your God, you and your children, and obey his voice in all that I command you today with all your heart and with all your soul, then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and have compassion on you. And he will gather you again from all the peoples where the Lord your God has scattered you. If your outcasts are in the uttermost parts of heaven, from there the Lord your God will gather you, and from there he will take you. And the Lord your God will bring you into a land that your fathers possess, that you may possess it. And he will make you more prosperous and numerous than your fathers. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring, so that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, that you may live. And the Lord your God will put all these curses on your foes and enemies who persecuted you. And you shall again obey the voice of the Lord, keep all his commandments that I command you today. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your womb and in the fruit of your cattle and in the fruit of your ground. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, as he took delight in your fathers when you obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes that are written in this book of the law when you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, feed our faith. Thank you for giving it to us in the first place, but we ask that you help us to grow so much deeper. Strengthen our relationship with you that nothing would be able to shake it. Bless us, Holy Spirit, that my words would be yours and that our hearts, our minds, and our lives would become what you want them to be. Father, together we pray. Amen. So this morning, we're celebrating a relaunch, in case you hadn't noticed. We have tables in the back for the tacos. We have all these chairs out. And we're celebrating the relaunch not because Edgewater is new. Edgewater's been around for a while. But because we have so many new and fresh and exciting things here at Edgewater to celebrate. I mean, first and foremost, we have this new facility, this new place. And we're so thankful to God that we have this space, that we get to gather together, we get to worship him, and we get to be together in community. And in addition to that, you have a new pastor that you are now stuck with. I, gra I graduated from the seminary in May, and I was sent out here to serve you guys and to serve the community of Eastvale. And alongside those new things, we have a new website, we have a new app, we have new presentation software that is hopefully helping with your worship this morning. If, if you really want to go into it, we even have a new constitution. But all this stuff begs the question, why? Why did we bother coming to a new space? Why did you guys bother bringing a pastor in? Why did we put the effort in? Why are we doing what we do? Why, do we, why are we here? And we have something new to help answer that as well. We have a new mission statement. Although I, I hesitate to call it new. Because in reality, it's more of a refinement. Because the old mission statement used to be connecting people to Jesus. And I love that mission statement. I do. It's a great, it's a great thing to do. It's connecting people to Jesus. That's, that's kind of my thing. But we're, we're looking for a little bit more organizational clarity and direction. So we, we refined it a little bit. And it led us to this. Deeply rooted in faith, Edgewater proclaims the love and forgiveness won by Christ's death and resurrection through outreach and service. We nurture Christian development through worship, education, and prayer that we would be a faithful community that serves one another and the world. And with this new mission statement, we're actually we're doing one more new thing. We're starting a new series, and this is going to be my first sermon series with you guys, because we're going to walk through this statement and talk about what it actually means for who we are and what we do. And as one might guess, we're going to start at the beginning. Deeply rooted in faith. And when we say, well, we're going to talk about being deeply rooted in faith, the, the question might come to mind 
Why did we just read that passage from Deuteronomy then? Well, because the Old Testament does a powerful thing for us as Christians today. It gives us an incredible window into the character of God and how he interacts with his people. Because our God is steady. Our God does not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So when we see our God acting and speaking in the Old Testament, we can say, that's our God. And that's how he acts today. So when we look at that message from Deuteronomy, we understand a little bit more about the character of God. And where that connects to our mission statement is I actually think that the analogy of a tree is an excellent way to understand this connection that God has to his people. Because the reality is without, a, without trees, or trees without roots, they wither. They rot, they die. Trees, roots need to be fed. They need to be an enriching soil. And then roots, they shape the tree that the rest of the world can see. And just like that, our faith is like that soil that we're rooted in. Because without our faith, our lives wither. Our roots in faith, they need to be fed and our roots in faith, they shape our lives that the rest of the world can see. So we're going to run with this analogy. And, and the first aspect of that analogy that I really want to, I want to dive into is the fact that trees need roots. Because there's this reality, if you went home and you grabbed the tree in your front yard, your backyard, wherever you got a tree, maybe it's your neighbor's tree, don't do this to your neighbor's tree, and you rip that tree out of the ground, or if it's a big tree, you ask Rob really nicely, and he comes, he brings a chain on your big old tree, and you rip it out of the ground, and you somehow suspend this tree in the air, or maybe you, you just lay it on your driveway, or maybe you set it in the road, I wouldn't recommend that one, that tree is not going to survive and thrive. That tree whose roots are no longer in soil is going to wither, it's going to die, and it's going to rot. And in Deuteronomy, we see the aftermath of Israel not being rooted in faith because God's, God is talking about what he has done to them, how he has treated them because they have abandoned that faith. He has cast them out. He has let nations come in and invade them and take them away. And in our faith today, we need to be rooted in faith because while we're in that faith that we're given through the Holy Spirit, we have life, and that life is eternal. You see, when we're connected to Christ and our, our faith is deeply rooted and our relationship with God is deep, deeply rooted, we're promised an eternal future with him. We're promised a place in his new creation. And that's an incredible gift that we've been given. So like trees need roots, we need to be rooted in faith. And stepping forward, uh, trees can't do well in just any soil, right? They need sustenance. The roots need to be fed. If you put a tree and plant it in toxic sludge, it's not going to do well. But if you plant it in good soil that has water, that has nutrients, that tree is going to thrive. And just like those trees, our, our faith needs to be enriched. Our faith needs things to grow. And you might say, well, what, how do I do that? How, how do I enrich? What, what is this enriching soil? I mean, you're all off to a great start. You're here this morning. This Sunday worship is one of the ways that our faith is enriched, that we, we grow closer to our God. We worship together. We come together in community. But if a tree is only in good soil once a week... That's not enough. A tree isn't going to get everything it needs. And our faith is the same way. If, if you just come once a week or maybe even less than that, it's, it's going to be a lot harder for that faith to grow strong. And you may say, well, well, how do I do it? You're not here on Wednesdays. What do I do on Wednesday? What do I do on Monday? Well, we have some opportunities for that. And one example I have for you is something called community groups that we started a while back. These are groups of, of eight to ten people. They, they meet once a week 
to talk about faith, to talk about the words, to talk about their lives. And, and I want to ask for those of you who are already in, in, involved with these groups, that's the men's group, the women's group, the uncommon group, the young adult group, the youth group. If you're in one of those groups and you feel that your life has been enriched and your faith has grown because of that, can I just get you to raise your hands? And for those of you who are unaware, almost everyone who's in those groups just raised their hands, and I'm really glad because that would have fallen flat if you didn't. Because that's a great opportunity. And if you're like, I want to get involved with that, let me know. I would love to get you connected. But that's not the only way that we can build our faith. Another really low-effort way is just to spend time in God's Word. And that's one of the really cool things about our new digital presence. If you get connected to our app, and there are cards with QR codes on those back tables that you can do it while you're eating tacos, we can do a church reading plan together. And what's so cool about this reading plan is if you come across a text and, you, and it's hard, you're like, I don't, I don't know how to deal with this. You can comment on the text right there and it's shared with our community and we can say, oh, here's how I understood it or here's how this connects to our life or we can offer support, we can offer prayer and we can be in the word together. And that reading plan starts next Sunday, so you have some time to get the technology figured out because I know that's not everyone's strong suit. So we have the community groups, we have the prayer, we have the, the reading plan. But all of our ways to connect with God, to, to enrich our faith, aren't academic, aren't studying, because that's not how everybody connects. You see, being in community, being in fellowship, just hanging out with other Christians, that can enrich our faith. Grabbing coffee with someone from church, being in a fantasy league with other Christians, getting dinner, going to the Marsh's pool party in a couple weeks, all of these ways, we're just hanging out. It enriches our faith to be supported by those other Christians. And the last idea I have for you this morning to help us enrich our faith is just to love on your neighbor, to serve your neighbor, to, to literally go to the person who actually lives next to you and say, hey, can I help you with your lawn work this week? Or when you see someone struggling in the parking lot to load something in their car, say, hey, can I give you a hand with that? If you see someone who you can tell is having a hard time, stopping and saying, hey, can I, can I pray with you quick? Just loving our neighbor is another way to enrich our faith. And the incredible thing is our faith can actually lead us to do that. Because the reality is our roots, they shape the rest of our lives. And it's at this point I actually want to draw you back to the picture that I had up at the beginning. And I chose this picture of a tree and its roots for a reason. Okay, and that's because there's a certain level of symmetry to it. And there's this, actually, this really weird thing that I think is cool, but most of you might not. That mathematically speaking, there are trees, there are species of trees where the roots are a fractal reflection of the canopy. So there's a very real symmetry between the roots and, and the rest of the tree that we can see. And that's because how the roots are, that reflects in the tree that the rest of us can see. If the roots are healthy, you're going to get a healthy tree. But if the roots are unhealthy, if the roots are withering and dying and they're not in good soil, that's going to reflect into the health of the tree. And you see, our faith is the same way. When, our, when our, we are deeply rooted in our faith, when we are deeply rooted in our relationship with God, that changes our lives that changes our lives that the world can see. And I want to be clear what I'm not saying here. I'm not saying that having faith is going to somehow make your life easier. I'm not saying it's going to make your business successful. I'm not saying it's going to magically fix all your relationships. It's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is faith in God, it changes you. 
And a couple of ways, the first way it does that is it changes how you see the world. Because when things happen, you, you don't just see it as happenstance, you see it as God working. So when you do get that promotion, when, when you get that thing you needed, you don't just say, oh man, that was lucky. Oh man, my boss must really like me. You say, wow, look how God just blessed me through that person. So it changes how we see the world because we see God at work and we recognize God at work because he is at work. And another way that that our faith impacts and changes us is it changes how we see other people. Because you don't just see people. You see people for whom Christ died. And when I look at someone and I say, that's someone Christ died for, that isn't just a person anymore. That's a person who has value. That is a person who is worth dying for. That's a person who is lovable. We see our faith, it changes how we see people. And one more way that our faith changes us is it changes how we act. And and for this example, I actually, I want to pull out something that my teachers at Vanderbilt used to say all the time. For, for those of you who don't know, I studied education at Vanderbilt, and something that you could always put in a paper and you'd get a couple points on it was that learning is caught, not taught. And they talked to this especially about behavior, about character, about attitude, because the reality is if you tell a kid, shape up, don't lie, and they see you lying to other kids all the time, you haven't taught them not to lie. If you tell a kid, be neat, and they look at your desk, and it's a mountain of chaos, you haven't taught the kid to be neat. You see, because our learning is so shaped with what surrounds us, with what, what we see, the examples in our lives, that we catch that understanding much more than it's taught. So when we are deeply rooted in faith, when we are deeply rooted in our relationship with God, we see that example. We're we're surrounded by God's will for our lives and it changes how we act because we start to catch it. You see, brothers and sisters, our faith changes how we act. So at Edgewater, we are deeply rooted in faith and this is a faith that sustains us. A faith that we strive to feed and to grow. It's a faith that shapes the entirety of our lives. Amen. Now may the peace of God, who roots our hearts in that faith, keep your hearts and your minds close to him now and forever. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, we're preparing to come forward and receive another one of the incredible gifts that God gives us in Holy Communion. He promises to be here every Sunday for us. This is his body and his blood. And and here at Edgewater, we believe that that is a very real promise for us. And if you are a repentant sinner, if you genuinely want the forgiveness and the relationship that God promises each and every one of you, this gift is for you. But this, this table says something else about us. Communing together and coming here and sharing in this gift, it tells the world that we believe together, that we walk together in this faith. And if you are comfortable with that, if you are comfortable saying, I am a repentant sinner and I believe alongside the Lutheran church, then you are welcome at this table. And if you're not, if you're not there yet, if some some part of that makes you feel uncomfortable, please still come forward and, and we'll have a quick prayer and we can talk about it afterwards. Because the promise that we have here is that on the night when he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had broken it, he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to him saying, Take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, the table is prepared. Come and eat. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice Let all the earth rejoice He wraps himself in love Darkness tries to hide Trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. No one will see how great, how great.
Please stand. Brothers and sisters, now may this very true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in body, mind, and spirit in the one true faith now and to life everlasting. Depart in peace and joy, knowing your sins are forgiven. Amen. I keep coming back to this gift. We've been gifted so much in this service and we're gifted again to come before our Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, creation is broken and we see that so often in the sickness and the illness that goes on around us. And sometimes that sickness, it comes really close to home. And this morning, we ask that you heal all who suffer with their health. But this morning, we especially ask for Eric, Linda, Zach, Stephanie, Nee, Charlene, April, Mary and her family, Alex, Tiffany. We ask that you be with the doctors that, that minister to them. We ask that you be with the nurses and with the support staff that work so hard for our health. And we ask that you be with their families and their friends, all those people who are giving them emotional and mental support in this time. Bless them with your healing, bless them with your peace, and bless them with your hope. Father, this morning we also ask for your blessing on all those who have lost loved ones. Whether expectedly or not, we ask that you be with them, comfort them, Especially we ask for the family of Richard, that you would walk alongside them and draw them closer to you. And Father, we ask for all of those who battle with mental illness and mental disorders, especially with anxiety and attention disorders. We ask that you give them the peace and hope that really only you can. Be with the counselors and the psychiatrists and all the other professionals who support them in their struggles. Father, this morning we also ask for your blessing on churches everywhere. We ask that you keep them faithful to your word, faithful to your gospel, and that ultimately they are a tool to connect people to you. Help us, especially here at Edgewater. Bless this relaunch that it would be the start of a powerful gospel ministry here in Eastvale. Help us to be a light to the people that you have called us to be a light to. Father, this morning we also ask for your blessing on leaders. Leaders in the government, leaders in our places of work, leaders in our schools, leaders in our families. Help them to do what is right. Help them to lead as you would have them lead. And help those who follow them to respect them as the authorities that you have put in place. Finally, Lord, this morning we pray for our world, our world that is hurting. And we ask that you work in a powerful way in our world, especially those who suffer from conflict and violence, especially on our hearts this week and these past couple weeks are the people of Afghanistan and all the people who have served there. Bring peace to that part of the world and bring your gospel light to as many as is in your will. Father, we also ask for all of those who are struggling with the events that happened in our country 20 years ago, for the families who lost people on September 11th or in the aftermath of that event, for all those who struggle as a result, we ask that you walk alongside them and bless them. And finally, we ask for those who are consumed by idols, for those who feel hopeless, for those who don't know you, work in their hearts and in their minds and in their lives with your Holy Spirit that they would be brought to you as the one true light. Father, we, we pray all these things in the name and, and by the command of your Son who also taught us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction of our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. And before we close with our final song, I would also like to offer up a prayer for the meal we're about to share together so that this can be a smooth transition to the tacos. So let's pray for our food as well. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen. Should put that on the screen, too. <laughs> Enjoy lunch. Bring a chair with you. Bring a chair. Bring a chair with you. Please bring the chair with you.